Hi, good morning, hey, good Josh, afternoon. How are you? Hi. Hey. How are you? Um, thanks for thanks for jumping on and thanks for uh, your your patience on this. Um, yeah, as I said, really excited to kick this off. So I'll just uh, leave uh, the presentation to you. Over to you. Well, Josh. All right. thank you very much. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Uh, my name is Josh Long. I work on the Spring team, and uh, I am here to talk to you all about the uh, amazing Spring AI project, which, by the by, uh, releases a GA release on uh, twenty May. So that's just uh, what is that? You know, seven short days away. And, uh, and, and indeed, I think there's even a, a final sort of release candidate, uh, or maybe it's a final, I don't know. It's a release candidate today or sometime very soon, so be on the lookout for that. And uh, the whole purpose of Spring AI is to sort of commoditize a lot of the patterns that people realize that they need when working with uh, AI engineering patterns. I think we in the Java and Spring communities are uniquely well-situated to take uh, advantage of this moment in time uh, to, uh, to, <clears throat> to you know, sort of integrate uh, AI into our applications. And when we do that, we find that as amazing as AI technologies are today, they're not perfect and there are some drawbacks. And so we see certain uh, problems and, and well understood patterns. For example, it's hard to get an AI model to stay focused on one particular outcome. So you give it a system prompt. Uh, they're stateless. That is to say, they forget every single, uh, you know, they forget what you've said after every single request. So you, you're, you're meant to uh, provide a transcript that's called chat memory. Uh, they don't know how to, ex to integrate with the external world. So you give them tool calling. They don't know about your data. So you prompt stuff, which is to say you take data and put it in the body of the text sent to the AI model. Uh, but what data? That's the question. Not all models can support all your data. Certainly it's, it's variable and it depends on the model and the size of your data, but there is for all of them, a finite sort of upper bound, some much larger than others, but still. So in order to limit how much data you send, just to be sensible and to avoid the complexity and dollars and cents cost, you use things like RAG, retrieval augmented generation, and vector stores, which make it easy to uh, do sem semantic similarity searches uh, for data. And of course, finally, these chat models are just that. They're chat models. They like to chat, and they sometimes do so confidently, even when they're dead wrong. So you have to make sure that you evaluate their output. So today we're gonna to look at how you can use Spring AI to uh, sort of meet the uh, moment with um, uh, with some of these kind of use cases in, in hand. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a little dog adoption shelter uh, thing, right? We're gonna build a, a shelter for uh, dogs that you can adopt. And uh, we're gonna do so in terms of, uh, you know, thinking about this dog that I learned about during the pandemic, whose owner went viral. The, uh, the owner, this woman, she put it, was trying to put up this dog for adoption and she described this dog very hysterically. She says, there's not a very big market for neurotic, man-hating, animal-hating, children-hating dogs that look like gremlins. And I think about this, this ad a lot. I mean, don't get me wrong, very, very hysterically funny ad and the dog is super cute looking. And so this ad went viral. I mean, here it is in uh, People Magazine. Here is the dog in BuzzFeed. And, uh, you, know, you know, the viral uh, chihuahua, the demonic chihuahua. And then of course, here's the dog in the New York Times, as one does, right? So I think about this dog a lot, right? Like, I would, let's build a little service to sort of make it easy for somebody to adopt the dog of their dreams, or, uh, you know, in this case, nightmare. So we're gonna go here to start.spring.io, your one-stop shop for generating new applications. And uh, we're gonna stick to uh, snapshots today, obviously, Wi-Fi permitting, oh goodness, of all the times for this to go slow. Oh my goodness, oh, there we go. Okay, don't fret, I won't, I won't either, okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna build an assistant. I'm gonna call it as such. I'll bring in uh, the open AI support, bring in the web support, bring in Spring Data JDBC. Now mind you, I've already got a Postgres instance with the vector store capability built in. So I'll use PG vector. I've already got that running. I'll bring in the Gravium native image support. And uh, I think, oh, maybe I'll get the actuator as well. And uh, that looks like it's fine to me. You can use any of a dozen different models. I mean, open AI, Bedrock, Gemini, Alama, whatever you can use. Any, uh, any of the, I mean, there's a bazillion different vector databases. All the big ones that you can imagine are all there as well. So we're gonna open that up. Oh, you know what else I wanna do? Last thing, I also want uh, to build an MCP client, okay? So go to the downloads directory here. We're gonna delete the existing one that I errantly uh, created just a second though. Hit enter. That'll give me a zip file. What is this? Okay, go back to that. Go over here. And we're gonna go back to my zip file here. LS, okay, UAO assistant.zip. And uh, that'll open up. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna build an application that talks to a database, okay? Uh, I'm gonna bring in some dependencies here as well before we do that. So we're gonna bring in a, uh, a dependency for Spring AI Advisors Vector Store, which is a, a custom one that we're gonna need. I'm gonna switch us to snapshots, okay? So we'll go over here. 
Okay, very good, snapshot. And uh, you know, the question is, will it recognize what dependencies I want? Looks like it, looks like it. Yep, that's a snapshot, very good. So let's go ahead and build the application, yeah? First things first, this application is gonna talk to a SQL database, so we'll specify as much here. We'll say spring data source uh, JDBC URL is a JDBC Postgres QL localhost my database. You should obviously externalize these as environment variables. You wouldn't put them in your, your credentials like that, but I am doing the wrong thing, do as I say, not as I, as I do. There's that. Uh, we also are going to want to in initialize a vector store, so I'll tell it to initialize a schema should that become necessary. Uh, and uh, okay, I think we're ready to go. Let's build a controller, and this is going to be an assistant controller that'll help people answer questions about the dogs uh, in the shelter. So we're having, uh, you know, uh, assistant endpoint here, string inquire, uh, and we'll, we'll accept a question from the user to interview basically the shelter about the dogs in the shelter, right? And uh, we're going to have an AI model that'll do that work for us to answer those questions for us to help people get the dog of their of their dreams or uh, indeed nightmare. So, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And uh, what model are we using? Well, like I said, when we initialize the program, we're using open AI, but there's many you can use. Make sure that you've specified a credential like that, right? I've already done that as environment variables off screen, but just trust me that it's been done and forgive me for not leaking my API credential. So first things first, let's try this out, huh? So this dot AI dot, um, dot, uh, dot, uh, what is that? Prompt dot user. And the user prompt is the question being sent from the user. Uh, we're gonna call the model, get the content back as a string, although you can get it structured as a strongly typed object as well using entity, right? There's a, another variant there. And uh, I think we're good. I think that'll already be kind of interesting. Let's go ahead and start this up. The problem you're gonna find is that it's actually, it'll do okay. You can ask it questions like HTTP 8080. Uh, let's see, make this uh, JLong um, assistant. And it'll be, the question will be, uh, you know, my name is Josh. Okay, fine. So that'll, that should work. Yeah, great. Okay. So what's my name? Let's just see if it remembers, right? This is what we talked about earlier with the memory. Uh, what's my name, right? Uh, okay. It's like that movie Memento. So what we have to do is to give it uh, a way to remember that. And we're going to do so with an advisor. Advisors are how you configure, uh, you know, the capture of the, of the, um, transcript that gets propagated on every single subsequent request. So prompt chat memory advisor, okay? We'll say memory and uh, it'll just be a concurrent hash map tied to each user. Obviously we have implementations that are uh, backed by durable storage like SQL or Redis or whatever. Uh, so here we're gonna say this.memory.compute if absent user. And we're gonna say prompt chat memory advisor. And here we're gonna use a message window chat memory uh, passing in a particular implementation of the repository, the in-memory repository in this case, okay? So there's that. And when I've configured that, uh, oh, I'll do this down here when I, actually I'll do this in the uh, in the call site, right? Okay, put that there and we'll say var memory or var advisor, okay? So we're gonna compute it if it doesn't already exist. If it does, then great. And that's gonna be the path variable string user coming in from the URL template there, okay? And uh, we're gonna pass that, that advisor along uh, on the call site. So here we go. Dot advisors use uh, advisor. Et voila. So let's let's go ahead and uh, uh, start that up and see what that's bought us, if anything. Right? It should be certainly a little bit better situated to answer this question. My name is Josh. Okay. What's my name? Okay. Great. So it's got the memory, but now it doesn't know about the data and it doesn't know what it's doing. So let's rectify both of those. We can get it to pretend it's it's an employee for our fictitious dog adoption agency by giving it a system prompt. So let's do that. I happen to have a system prompt here. Let me just cat it to the buffer and wait, that's wrong. You know what? That's wrong. Dog it. There we go. Much better. I'm going to copy and paste that, put it here and we'll say dot system prompt system. Okay. There we are. There's this. And uh, that's, that's the uh, system prompt. It'll now act as though it's a, an employee of our fictitious dog adoption agency named Pooch Palace with locations in Antwerp, Seoul, Tokyo, uh, Tokyo, Singapore, Paris, whatever. Okay. Let's now then put that, um, data. You know, I want to give it access to the data. The data is in our database. Uh, we're going to use Spring Data JDBC to get the data from our SQL database and write it out to the implementation of the vector store, which in this case happens to be the same SQL database. But it not it doesn't always necessarily need to be that, right? It could be, uh, you know, WeV8 or ChromaDB or Elasticsearch or whatever, right? So interface dog repository. And indeed, there's an implementation of the vector store implementation 
or in, rather interface for all those different implementations, right? Uh, I'll tell Spring Data JDBC to map that. There you go, that's the primary key. And let's write that code. We're gonna read from the dog repository and we're gonna write out to the vector store here, vector store. So I'll say repository at find all that for each dog var and uh, you know we're gonna write out a Spring AI document uh, for each record in the database. So ID, name, and then description. And then we'll do a formatted dot dog that ID name description. Fantastic. Now uh, that's a document for dogs. So obviously, obviously, uh, it's a it's a uh, document. Okay, there we go. So now we're gonna write this out. We'll say vector store. Oh no. Okay, I'm learning Vim motions. If you uh, see me struggling here, list dot of document. All right, good. So now the finally, I want to tell the model that hey, should you get a request for which uh, you know. Uh, the, that necessitates, necessitates the need for data, go ahead and get it from the uh, vector store. We'll configure yet another advisor, a question answer advisor, passing in a pointer to the vector store. So let's see what that's bought us, if anything. Yeah. So we go over here, HTTP 8080, uh, JLong um, assist. Well, here, let me just, con uh, we'll do HTTP, control R, control R again, control R, no, nothing, Bueller. Okay, whatever. So HTTP 8080 JLong assistant question equals, uh, do you have any neurotic dogs, right? That should be the question. We're going to look for our dog Prancer. Okay, yes, we do have a neurotic dog available for adoption. Meet Prancer, a demonic neurotic dog who unfortunately has a dislike for men, animals, and children. If you're interested in learning more about Prancer or arranging a visit, please let me know. Boy, am I. Who wouldn't be? I mean, that sounds like the greatest dog, right? A spicy but very, very cool doggo. So what I want to do is uh, avoid reinitializing that. Obviously, I don't want to do that more than necessary because these uh, calls to your embedding models, they can be quite expensive, if not in dollars and cents than in terms of complexity. And by the way, we have the Spring Boot Actuator on the class path, which gives you observability, which allows you to see things like how many tokens have been consumed. That is to say, how much data you've sent to and fro. Okay, so let's create a tool that allows this AI model to help participate in the scheduling of, uh, of adoption visits, right? And I'll just create a simple method here, schedule. It'll take in the dog ID and the string dog name. And uh, we're gonna return just a, a date in the future, just to guarantee that we, uh, have something you know that we know was not hallucinated, right? And we'll give it a two string. And I'll say system out scheduling uh, the dog ID, okay, and then dog name. Uh, and then uh, we're gonna say at tool description, schedule an appointment, uh, a point, you can use AI to grammar correct this, to pick up and uh, or, or adopt a dog from a pooch palace location, right? And uh, you give it tool params. And again, remember, your parents always taught you to use your words. Well, this is what they meant, right? Use the words um, to better to be very, very descriptive in defining the schema, in effect, of this tool, okay? The idea of the dog. Okay, fine. So there's, there's that. I'm going to now give my model access to that tool by, again, just injecting it into the constructor here and uh, doing that, okay? So scheduler, and going to go down here. I'll say default tools, okay, scheduler. Let's go ahead and start that up. Okay, take this again. So do you have any neurotic dogs? Okay, great, we got Prancer. Now, uh, that sounds great. Let's pick up that dog from the uh, fantastic. Uh, when can I schedule an, appoint an appointment to pick up Prancer from the London location, okay? If everything's gone to plan, it says May 16th. Today's the 13th of May. Fantastic. You can see it's been there. Now, this is all well and good, but I'm running on my local machine. This is a Java tool that I've made available to my model. It's knowing to interact with it by the descriptive text that we've given it. But that said, I want to be able to repurpose this business logic from other languages. Anthropic, back, way back in November of 2024, does anybody here remember that far back? I certainly don't. It's been a blur. Uh, they introduced this new protocol called MCP. And uh, MCP is Model Context Protocol. So... We're gonna spin up a MCP service here. Uh, just open that up. And remember the Spring AI team donated the core Java abstraction that is now the official SDK for MCP. Indeed, the easiest way to build MCP services on the JDK is to use Spring AI since we built the core abstraction and the uh, corresponding integration in Spring AI itself. So we're gonna export now. We, I copied and pasted that code. Don't ever, don't ever do that, okay? Not even when you're all by yourself at home and no one is looking. Uh, but 
I'm going to copy and paste and I'm going to inject the dog adoption scheduler and I'll say scheduler and uh, I'll tell this thing to run on a separate port. I'll say port 8081. Here we go. And now I've got a dog adoption scheduler sized hole in my original code. So I need to like, uh, I need to replace that with instead a reference to the MCP remote uh, server. Okay. So let's create a bean here. MCP sync client, MCP sync client return, MCP sync client, uh, sorry, MCP client dot from, and then it'll be HTTP dot builder. And I'll say localhost 8081, and it'll be dot build, dot build, okay? And then technically, technically var MCP is this, and I would say return MCP, and I think you're supposed to call MCP dot initialize. I always forget, I'm not really good at the, uh, the old software thing, right? Okay, so uh, let's put that here and get rid of that, okay? Goodbye, injecting that now instead, and we're gonna replace this with a callback, yeah? So callback, New, and then we'll say um, new sync, okay, uh, MCP sync client, restart. Okay, so if everything's gone to plan, we've got over here, um, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I'm going to use the snapshots here as well on my uh, scheduler. <laughs> this will go well, I'm sure. Okay, here we go. Good. Hello. Okay, good. Snapshot, command shift I, reload. Depend that. Okay. So it's reloading that with the new class path. Josh, just to let you know, you have uh, one last minute to save all the no dogs. No problem. Oh, wow. Here we go. <laughs> Ready. Uh, do you have any neurotic dogs? Yep. We got Prancer. When can I schedule an appointment to pick up Prancer from the London location? And May 16th. So there's the original assistant talking via this MCP protocol over here to the scheduler module. Now, my friends, in that brief time, we've looked at uh, just a few of the things you can do with the new Spring AA 1.0, again, coming out in uh, just about a week's time, GA. Uh, you can go to start.spring.io, get the bits. Um, obviously, the next natural step after this is to then, you know, you've got the primitives. You can do one-shot requests with ease and aplomb, and obviously, naturally, it's a very easy thing to then put that in a sort of uh, a flow, a structure that allows you to drive towards a more complex outcome. That's called agentic programming, and this is a natural thing to do with Spring AI as well. I want to thank you for your time and uh, take any and all questions. Thanks very much.